Hi, I'm Andy Glass of Glass Impressions. A client came to me a few months ago asking me for an idea to document him and his dad golfing the top 100 public golf courses in the United States. Here's what I've come up with. The top section is a map of the lower 48 states with peg holes representing the location of these golf courses. And the bottom section is a list of the top 100 public golf courses with matching peg holes. The idea is as the father and son combo golf each course, they pull the peg from the list and they'll place it on the map representing that they golf that course. So let's head into the workshop and I'll show you how I made it. Stick around, hope you enjoy. Using the CNC is the only way I could maintain the precision that I envisioned for this project. I started in Vectric Aspire and used the intense functionality of the program to design the map, engraving the names, and also the peg holes. The well-known preview function in Vectric's project is a great way to preview your design without having to cut out a bunch of test cuts. I purchased a single sheet of walnut veneer with an MDF core. I used my TS-55 to cross cut it to rough length. Using a couple devices to keep the material tight against the fence, I cut the material to width at the table saw. I don't cut it to the exact size in the first cut. I leave about a quarter of an inch and then flip it to rip the other side to remove any damage or uneven cutting from the track saw. I then cut it to final length using the cross cut accessory on my table saw. I will be using lacquer and the fumes can be a bit harsh. I use a full face shield and respirator combo to keep me from breathing them in. I stir the can a fair bit to mix anything up on the bottom and use a Dixie cup to move the lacquer into a secondary container while passing it through a strainer to collect any debris. After easing the edges with a sanding block, I apply four coats of lacquer using an old white cotton t-shirt bundled up into a ball. I load the pre-finished panel on the CNC and use the aluminum hold downs to firmly hold it in place. I place a scrap piece of wood on top to prevent damage to the surface. Using the jog function of my CNC Shark HD3 with extended bed, I jog the gantry to the center of my workpiece and zero out the X, Y, and Z axis and start the program. Using a 60 degree V-bit from Rockler, it perfectly cuts out the design we made in Vectrix Expire program earlier. I set the depth of cut to 1 16th of an inch. Once the work with the V-bit was completed, I installed a 1 quarter inch spiral bit and used the Z0 touch plate to re-zero the Z axis. I selected the peg hole program we designed earlier and hit start. It is important to note that the RPM should be decreased a fair bit to prevent burning. I use the same cutting procedure with the name section as we did with the map portion earlier. I cut it to width of the table saw and then use the sliding accessory on my table saw to cut it to length. Zeroing out the Z axis with a 30 degree engraving V bit, I hit start on the course name engraving program. It is truly a treat to have a CNC. Especially with projects like this, you really get an appreciation for the precision and accuracy of a CNC machine.
With the long engraving program completed, I again install the one quarter inch spiral bit to drill the peg holes. While the peg holes finished up, I took advantage of the multitasking opportunities a CNC offers and used an arts and crafts syringe set to apply black paint to the map engraving grooves. Once the paint dries, I use a fine grit sandpaper into my random orbit sander to clean up any black paint that is on the surface. After vacuuming and using a tack cloth to get the fine dust off, I apply another two coats of lacquer. To apply the black paint to the engraved letters, I use a small brush. This was much faster and it didn't have any effect on the walnut as I had pre-finished it. Just like before, I sanded off the excess paint and applied a few more coats of lacquer. I am going to wrap both sections with matching walnut hardwood. I rip these sections to width at the table saw. I mill a rabbit at the table saw. This will allow the molding to wrap around the panel and sit a bit proud. I think it adds a nice shadow line. I cut the miters at the miter saw. It is very important to use a hold down to keep the blade from pulling the material and ruining the miter. I clamp the section in place and use a fine pencil to mark the other side of the miter. I use a laser on my miter saw to get me close and slowly sneak up on the fit with a few test fits and going back and forth to the saw. Once the moldings are completed, I apply a few coats of lacquer and glue them on. Using a regular drinking straw is a great way to clean up glue squeeze out. I cut one inch birch dowels at the table saw and use the oscillating spindle sander to round over the edges to make going in and out easier. I then use black solar lux stain to color them black.
What do you guys think? I thought it turned out great. It turned out a bit on the large side, but there was no way to avoid it as I needed the map large enough so the holes could be spaced out and I need the engraving large enough so the engraving would come out okay and legible. If you guys have any questions or comments about this project or anything else, please leave them below. If you'd like to know more information on glass impressions, I encourage you to visit my website, andyglassimpressions.com, or search me on YouTube, Glass Impressions, as I frequently release woodworking and CNC content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.